In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we gather now on the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. We acknowledge today as earthly rulers come and go, the kingdom of God lasts forever, and Jesus Christ reigns supreme as King of heaven and earth. Let us humbly come before the Lord now to confess our sins and to be strengthened by his grace, his pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you have reconciled the world to yourself through the blood of the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your kingdom lasts forever. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Messiah, our King and our God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have sat foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing in the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity, to it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. 
Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we celebrate this solemnity today that will conclude our liturgical year before we begin a new liturgical year next Sunday, with the first Sunday of Advent, I want to spend a few minutes considering not Christ the King, but Christ's kingdom, because this feast reminds us what we pray for day after day, week after week, when we pray, thy kingdom come. This kingdom doesn't have a castle or a court. It isn't a place of royal fanfare. It isn't even found on a map. It is a kingdom that dwells within the human heart. And its great defining landmark is the cross. 
This is where we encounter Christ the King in today's Gospel reading. In fact, this reading may hit us as a shock. Usually we hear this Gospel during Holy Week. But on this feast, when we celebrate Christ's triumphant presence in the world, we don't meet this all-powerful King in a moment of splendor. We meet him at his most humble and most humiliated, stripped, beaten, dying on a cross. Yet this is the part that we pray for when we pray, thy kingdom come. We pray for a kingdom of peace and justice, of course, but we also pray for a kingdom of sacrificial love, a place where the greatest honor isn't on how much we have or on how much we control, but in how much we give up. A kingdom where true power lies in being powerless. It is a place where we are called to love, called to give, until there is nothing left. It is where pure love reigns. And it is in that kingdom where the good thief wants to dwell. This exchange has a unique place in all of Scripture. In this passage, Christ isn't called rabbi or teacher, but in the last moments of his life, someone finally calls him simply Jesus. It is the only moment in the Gospels where this happens. This is the only time that someone calls him by his given name. The man hanging beside our Lord speaks to him as a brother, as a friend. He talks to him literally, man to man. Jesus, he says to him, remember me when you come into your kingdom. These words passed down through history have become our words, the plea of anyone who has ever felt abandoned or lonely, desperate, or afraid. We pray that God doesn't forget us and that he gives us somehow his grace. In other words, thy kingdom come. And Jesus answers that simple prayer with these words. Today, you will be with me in paradise. The kingdom will come. One man's faith at the last moment of his life saves him. It is something that should give us all great comfort and great consolation. A father of the church, Cyril of Jerusalem, beautifully described how the first Christians received communion, saying that they made their hands like a throne to receive the Lord. The very title, Christ the King, has outlasted most of the world's monarchies. Kings, of course, have fallen out of fashion. There are only about now about 40 real monarchs now ruling in the world, and most of them are just figureheads. But the one we honor and the one we celebrate today, of course, isn't. As Paul describes him today, he is the firstborn of all creation, for in him the fullness was pleased to dwell. This is the one we celebrate. This is the one we prepare to welcome in a few weeks at Christmas. And this is the one who we will greet today with our hands outstretched like a throne as we receive him now in spiritual holy communion. When I was a teenager, a popular hymn was the King of Glory. It says, the King of Glory comes, the nations rejoice, open the gates before him. Lift up your voices. Today, this last Sunday of liturgical year, we open the gates, we lift up our voices, we stretch out our hands, and we welcome the King of Glory once again into our hearts, praying like the good thief, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Amen. And together now we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, we serve Almighty God. With trust in his generous mercy, let us humbly offer our prayers this day. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop Michael Fisher, that they may continue to grant them wisdom and courage in leading the church on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lawmakers, may God's grace direct their hearts in proposing laws that protect the life and rights of all people, including those yet to be born. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those living in war-torn lands or governed by oppressive regimes, May God protect and strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, as we close this church year, may God lift our hearts in gratitude, revealing his many blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> and for all the departed, may the King of Kings reveal his face and bring them lasting joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you sent your Son to be our true King. Please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your holy will for us. For we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water of mine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash my iniquities. Cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And may that peace now enter your hearts and your homes and all with whom you share peace today. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy, worthy that you, you should, should enter, enter under, under my roof, roof but only say the word, word and my, my soul, soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And our prayer now for Father Baker's canonization. Lord, Lord you, you gave, gave us your, your servant, Nelson, Nelson Baker, as an example of service to the poor, homeless, and young. By Father Baker's ardent concern for those in need, inflame our hearts and lives with compassion for the poor, justice for the oppressed, hope for the troubled, and courage for those in doubt. We pray through the intercession of Our Lady of Victory, if it be your will, that your servant Nelson Baker may one day be canonized. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.